Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. We thank God. It's been a while. Um, we bless God for um, Pastor Billy Call him uh, to Lagos and other different places of Nigeria where he had to uh, to uh, to travel. And uh, from what I understand, it is a season for him to be traveling around. So by the grace of God, by the grace of God, we should see him in Europe. We should see him in the UK. We should see him in America. We should see him. So uh, we thank God and we bless God for those that is hoping for that message to be. You guys are going to see me in the UK very soon. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So for, for God to, um, to use him uh, in different parts of the world, because currently um, people are interpreting the, um, the end of the age in different ways with all that is happening. I saw a video where somebody was, um, where somebody had, had put all the different videos for the, you know, regarding the different floods that we've had in Europe. We've had floods in Europe, uh, Belgium, Netherlands, you know, you know people dead and things like that. All the different events, people are interpreting it as, the, as signs of the end of the age. But Pastor, as Pastor Matthew has been teaching us, it is not just about the physical, but it is about working within us so that we can become the son of God, so that we can take our position by going through the, the 12 tribes and take over the kingdom where he says the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our God and then fulfill the, the mandate of God here on earth when we have been able to be empowered to do so. So um, it, it is everywhere currently. Every, I even saw another post where somebody explained you, you know, scriptures by saying you'll be wearing masks you staying in the tents and then explain different scriptures for that. So, uh, <laughs> Pastor, you've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> the mm -hmm. Lord will uh, open the eyes of our understanding because I see it everywhere, how people are interpreting everything that is happening currently in the scriptures. Somebody <clears throat> was even able to interpret the fact that we'll be wearing masks, there won't be weddings, feasts, and all those things. So, um, the Lord will grant you um, a greater audience so that uh, more people will be able to understand. And then so that we also have our, the eyes of understanding be enlightened so that we receive that word with faith in the name of Jesus. So Pastor, uh, the last time you, we went to Revelation, up to Revelation 7. So you explained the 12 tribes, actually how we were supposed to go through the 12 tribes to become um, to become the son of man that God wants us to become so that we can bring his kingdom down, so that we can, the kingdom of, of, uh, of this world can become the kingdom of our God. And, and I really also like the way you've, um, you've been explaining how Babylon, you know, our connection to Babylon, because the way sometimes you hear some people explaining Babylon is as if you should just close your house, build a tent for yourself and stay within those four walls and not go to work, not do anything. <laughs> as if like in the day of Abraham, where you just have cattle. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, a lot of people make it sound like that. Yes, they yeah. make it sound like that, Babylon. But when you were explaining that, yes, the phone was created by Babylon, but what do I use the phone for? I use the phone for the kingdom of God. Yeah. And yeah. I work 
in Babylon, but what do I use the resources that I get from Babylon? I use it for God. Amen. So this is the way we are supposed to understand it. So over yes. to you, Pastor. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Sophie. It's been a it's been like about two, three weeks now that we have last met um, viewers at home and uh, wherever you are at in the buses and um, all those places where you are at. I want to thank you for joining us again this evening. Um, it's been a while. Like Pastor said, I've had to do some journeys um, here and there. And um, um, so I'm back at home now by the grace of God. You know, there's really no place like home, um, except where, where else, wherever else the Lord has sent you to. That's the only place I can be like home. Amen. Now, uh, yeah, like Pastor said the other time, a lot of people interpret some of these things that are done, that are that we see occurring, physical occurrences, disastrous occurrences, most, most likely. Um, they use it as a sign of the end of the age. Yeah, in a way, they are signs of the end of the age, but um, not accurately so, because all of these things have been happening from before the, the, the present times. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a city, I've forgotten the name of the city now, where that was covered by ash that came from a mountain. They were, I think it was midnight or maybe somehow in the night, they were all asleep. It's a city that is still, um, you can see, I've forgotten the name. You know, they, the people are still cast in ashes still today. You know, it's a very popular um, name like that, but it just escaped my mind. So, and there have been so many other evil occurrences that have happened in the times. Um, in the ages, ages ago and um, uh, years, decades, centuries, and even millennia ago. Hmm. So if we want to be interpreting any flood that happens, any natural disaster that happens, any earthquake that happens as the sign of the coming of the Lord, what will we make of those things that happened before even 2000 years ago? Uh, what will we make? There were many wars back in the day of Jesus. Even before the days of Jesus, there were many wars. We read the wars in Abraham. You know, um, in Abraham's time, Abraham's day, there shall be wars and rumors of war. Jesus knew that there were wars before that time. So why did he say wars and rumors of war? Because he meant some other things that are deeper than people were thinking. And then he gave the understanding of these things to his servant, his prophet John, so that the church will not be deceived when they see physical, physical uh, signs. Uh, the city, but, um, the city, most people in the church are still being deceived. The city you are referring to is, I think, Pompeii in Italy? Pompeii, yes, Pompeii, yeah. Thank you very much, <laughs> thank you very much. Pompeii, yeah, you know. So what would you make, what would you make of Pompeii? What would we make of so many other cities or Atlantis that is, that is said to be a city that is under the sea? Now, how will we make all different kind of wars that had happened even before Christ was born? You know, so um, Jesus was talking something deeper. Jesus spoke in parables. Without a parable, he did not speak any words to the disciples or rather to the people. You know, and then he broke the parables whenever the disciples gathered. But he did not break these parables before he left um, to a lot of them. But to John, he, he broke the parables. So when he said, Many will come in my name, you see the horse rider, white horse rider. Many will come in my name, saying that I'm Christ, I shall deceive many, and all that. We see the white horse rider going out with a bow in his hand, going to, to con conquering and to conquer. When he says that there will be um, so, I mean, um, wars and rumors of wars, we see the, um, the red horse rider, I think, yeah, the red horse rider going out, the second horse rider rather, going out. And he uh, is with um, a, a, a um, is with a great sword, you know. And Bible says it is given to him to come to destroy much flesh, you know. And um, a, a great sword was given to him also. Now, when we see Jesus saying that there will be famines, then we see another horse, the black horse rider, going out, and then he is with a measure, and then someone. Among the beasts, says a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of uh, a measure of uh, 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 wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. You know, hot not the oil and the wine. So, what is that about? You understand? So, drugs and all of that. We see the chloros, 
the pale green horse rider going out, having death riding upon it, killing and destroying and, and all that. And then when we see after that, we see the souls that were under the altar resurrecting and asking for a recompense of their rewards concerning all standing the witness of Christ on the earth. And then later we get to the sixth. I mean, then the Lord told them, He said, Well, wait a little bit. And then for the numbers of your brethren who shall be killed as you are to be fulfilled. And then white robes were given to them and they were waiting. You know, so all of the first forces were the things that Jesus Christ spoke. So all, what Jesus Christ was speaking in Mark 24 were parabolic. They were parabolic, but he explained the parables to John so that the church would not be in darkness. Amen. But a lot of people today are still looking out for the physical signs and all that. Yet I'm not saying there will be no uh, corresponding physical time signs. You see, everything that God speaks, if God speaks a word, you know, it resounds in the three realms, the realm of spirit, the realm of soul, the realm of physical. You understand? So, but the physical uh, is, a least, is, a last, is a least bit of the realms of the attestation to the word of God and uh, of fulfillment of the word of God, you know. There are so many other, um, there are two other realms, you understand. So the realm of spirit, realm of soul, we'll, we'll talk about that much later. Then we see that later, we now see um, uh, uh, the heavens shifted, you know, that, that's just the, 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 the sixth seal. When the sixth seal happened, we saw the heavens shifting, the, um, what do you call it, um, the, the sun losing its light, it starts falling, then and all that, the sixth seal, and then we see um, a lot of uh, uh, two angels, I mean, I mean, four angels at the four corners of the earth. You know, um, we can see it after these things, chapter seven, verse one, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth or the sea or on, the, on any tree. Then I saw another angel standing from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their forehead. This is as the sixth seal, this is what's part of the sixth seal, you know. Part of the sixth seal was that we saw that, that in Revelation chapter 6, we saw that um, the heavens departed, the, uh, the sun could not give light, the moon did not give a light, the, the, the stars fell. And what does that mean? It means that there was a there it was talking about the the, um, uh, the fact that the kingdom of God had come in a group of people. You know, they are no longer under the control of the sun, they're no longer under the control of the moon, they are no longer charting their courses by the control of the stars. And, yeah. like that. and then all the all the um, kings of this earth and all of that, they began to, you know, they were they were asking the mountain, fall on us and hide us on the face of evil. From, they were not asking for themselves to be killed. Otherwise, why would they, why don't they just allow the if the son was coming to kill them, that is the son of man, he was coming to if he was coming to kill them, why didn't he just allow him to just kill them? You know, but they so so they were not saying mountain fall on us to kill us. No, they were asking for the mountains to shield them from the revolution that was about to take place. What is the mountain? What does mountain mean? Mountains are strongholds. The strongholds of philosophical expressions, the strongholds of mental expressions, the strongholds of um, of belief. You understand to shield them from the coming invasion of the kingdom of God on the earth, because it was the Son of Man that they saw. The Son of Man is the saints of the of the, of the Most High God. We are the ones coming. They, are, they can see that we are building up. They can see Christ coming in us. They can see that we are arising as an opposition of strength against them. So they ran quickly to, let's use it for the LGBT. They ran quickly at the, to the LG, LGBT, in the LGBT world. Oh, this is, is, that's the way we were born. That's the natural way we were born. So that they could really maintain that lifestyle. You understand? So that's how, that was what happened there. And then that's just an example. I'm not saying that is uh, uh, exactly what's going on. That's just an example. In other words, when they say, mountain fallen on the kings of the earth, the servants, all of them, they were hiding from the face of him that was to come. That's um, during the sixth seal, after the fifth seal, you know, you know. So, and then what did we see afterward? We see that um, um, it says, um, um, fall on us. Okay, let's just read it 16 and say to the mountains, fall on us and hide us on the face of him who sits on the throne and for the wrath of the lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come. 
and then he's able to, to stand. You know that when he sits on the throne, we're also sitting on the throne. So they are looking forward. They are seeing, they are anticipating, they are seeing the imminence of our arrival as the son of man on the earth. Hallelujah. And the son of man is the one that holds the kingdom of the earth. The son of man is a title of the political kingdom of Christ. On the earth. Amen. Christ is going to reign on the earth. So when he reigns, you know, you see King Queen Elizabeth II, you see King Edward, Edward VIII, you see King Henry VIII, Henry VIII and Louis, Louis XVI of France, you know. So the title of Christ is the Son of Man. Amen. So, and then that Son of Man title is a corporate membership title. According to Daniel chapter 7, he said, I saw one that like, well, like unto the Son of Man who came to the ancient of days, and there was given to him glory and dominion and a kingdom that all men, all nations should serve him. And then when they were dis- interpreting the words to Daniel, they, t- they told Daniel, this son of man that you see, hmm, coming with the clouds of heaven, it means that the people of the saints of the most high God shall take the kingdom. That is what Amen. it means. Hallelujah. Amen. It means the kingdom coming in us and through us. That's what it means. Meanwhile, they said the sixth seal was going to happen. I mean, so the sixth seal, when we, when we see the sixth seal continuing in its opening, uh, we see in, um, in um, the Revelation chapter seven, and we see, I'm just trying to take us back to some of the things we have learned. You know, we see in Revelation chapter seven, we see the four angels standing on the four winds of the earth, watching to hold the earth, the, uh, the sea, the earth, and the trees. And they say, don't, don't hold them until God places a seal on the, on his servants, uh, on his servant, not to put the seal on his servant. And what did we see later? What you see later is the action of putting the seal. Okay, because when you see that he's going to put the seal on the forehead of his servant, you would have ex- 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 uh, um, expected that the next verse will open with, "Oh, somebody has been sealed. Another person has been sealed. Another person will see big seal hitting people on their forehead." But that's not what we see. Later, he said he was going to seal the servants of our God on their forehead. But what was the action of the sealing? It is the thing, the action of the sealing were the things that he began to talk about just very, very soon after that. He said, let's read in verse Revelation chapter 7, verse 2. He's saying, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees. We have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Okay. And I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000 of the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Now, I'd like you to take note of something there. Don't we have sealed the servant of our God? When you go back a little bit to the fifth seal, where you see a resurrection, and people were asking, yes, we, have, we are true with our own journey. Lord, let's start to reign now. Let the kingdom come now. Let us start to reign. And then he told them, he said, wait, on the number of your fellow servants, we shall be killed as you were, have been fulfilled. So, but who did you see being sealed here? The servants of our God. So these people that were promised, they are fellow servants. When you get to Revelation chapter 7, verse 4, you will see that those fellow servants are the ones being sealed. So, so, um, Revelation chapter 7, verse 3 and 4. Those are the fellow servants that are being sealed there. And how are they being sealed? We were not told that they were putting this thing on their foreheads, everyone like that. We were told that, they were sealed and they were 144,000. And they were now told of their tribes. The tribes, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000. In 12 places, yeah. we have 144,000. Yeah. Why did you talk about 12,000? Why was the number 12 used? The number 12 is a number of divine government. It means that when you say they are sealed, okay, let's look at the word seal. Let's look for the interpretation of the word seal. When you have a uh, uh, Pastor Sophie and Pastor Israel both live in the United, uh, United Kingdom and they understand something about the seal of the, of the Queen of England. You know, she has a seal. So yeah. if, the, if the Queen sent a letter to you, to your house, she's likely going to seal the envelope with her seal. What does that mean? It means that the content of that letter bears our words. Right. They are words. They are our mental processes concerning a particular matter released to you. Did you get that? Yes. So when you talk about the seal, the seal means that, okay, if God is now sealing a person, if he seals me, it does not mean that, and he's sealing me on my forehead, it does mean that my thought processes, eh, everything in my head, my mind, my will, my thoughts, my emotions, they are sealed. They are sealed. It means that they belong 
to, to Jesus. Yeah. You understand? It yeah. means that it is his property. Yes. So the seal is not per se something that sets me, it's not a mark that sets me apart as, oh, this person should not be touched by the devil. This no, that's not what the seal is for. Yes, of course, definitely you, you cannot be touched by the devil and all that. But but you see, that seal, the first thing it says is that this man's thoughts belongs to me. This man's, when this man talks, he's talking my talk. When this man expresses his emotions, he's expressing my emotion. When this man expresses uh, a type of um, will, he's expressing my will. When this man thinks something, it is my thought. When this man, Lordship. you know, Lordship. Yeah, Lordship that I am Lord over him, he's been captivated by me, I, he belongs to me, he is my property. Amen. Amen. So that is what the seal means. Of course, when you are the property of the Lord, you will not be killed by the devil. Satan cannot touch you. Amen. The enemy cannot touch you. You know, yeah. and all that. So that's what the seal is about. And then when you talk about 12, 12 is not about divine government. Divine government means that this person is under my government. This person's mind is bearing my government. There is nothing this guy says that is out of my government. If, guy, if the guy thinks any word, it is my government. Every, you know, government means my principle, my idea. It doesn't go outside my idea. It doesn't go outside my principle. It doesn't think outside my thought. It doesn't feel outside my feeling. That is 12, the number of divine government. God cannot approve any governmental structure that does not bear the rule of 12. When Elijah was calling fire from heaven, he made sure that he put 12 stones there. You understand? 12 is the number of divine government. Even the heavens, the heavens can be divided. They are divided into 12. You know, the government of God is 12. The city of God has 12 gates. So each of those gates are the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. So what the Lord is talking about is that they, you know, they have gone through the gates. They have walked all through the gates. Now, why did they put a thousand there? A thousand there is a number of divine rests, a number of the millennium. These are the guys that will rule with the thoughts of God in the millennium. These are the ones through which the millennial reign will come. These are the ones that will celebrate the ultimate jubilee of the earth. These are the manifestation of the sons of God. These are the guys for which creation have been waiting. These are the guys that creation will come into rest by coming into their own liberty. This is what this place means. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, so when you look at it, you see all of the names of those tribes, which is another study entirely. If you want to study all of the names of those tribes, apart from the fact that I'm not prepared for that yet, we also will have to take us away from some of the things we mm -hmm. have to do. But that's another subject on its own. Yeah. We can look at it later. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. So those are the things. Yeah, that's where we have gotten to. Um, so these people that are sealed here, they are the guys, the fellow servants who should be killed as you were. You know, in, in the seal, in the fifth seal, you understand. He mm -hmm. said, wait until your fellow servants will be, who will be killed as you were. This this killing is what these guys have gone through. Because when you get to, for example, Reuben, you see the revelation of sonship, divine sonship. You're taken out of your natural habitat and you begin to say, oh, I am a, I, I am a divine being. You know, I, I, I have the life of God. And then you are taken to the schools of sonship and all of that. When you get to Simeon, Simeon is divine hearing. Levi, divine emotion. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and then um, Judah signifies praise. Your life begins to become, um, begin to become a praise unto God, which is a which is an incense. The life become an incense unto God. People begin to give praise unto God because like, you go through, 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 through like that until you hit Benjamin, which mm -hmm. Benjamin is the son of my right hand. And he has made us to sit down together with him, the right hand side of the majesty on high. Hallelujah. Amen. Far above every name that should be named. Yeah. I know a lot of believers claim that today because John said, I mean, Paul said that. All that Paul said were the things that are ultimate incumbent and ultimate on the church but he didn't give us like john the way to approach those things it uh, paul dealt with issues in the churches okay so don't he that stole let him steal no more let him work with his hand that he may have to give that efficient chapter four so i mean paul will say how how come any of you sleep, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are committing even sexual immorality that is named not even named in the world that somebody should be sleeping with his father's son? I mean father's wife in your in your in the middle of you. 
send that guy away. So Paul spent his time in the churches dealing with issues. issues. Okay, you guys, you want to go back to the law? How do you want to go back? He that doeth do miracles and walketh signs among us, doeth he by the, by the sayings of the law or by the hearing of faith? If indeed, you know, um, it's about the law, you know, then you guys are not saved and all that. And then you rebook them first Corinthians chapter 15. How come some of you are saying that there's no resurrection of the dead? If the dead rise not, how can we say that Christ rose from the dead? And if Christ did not rise from the dead, then you are still in your sin. And we have made, we have lied against the Lord. You understand? So Paul, you know, Paul, in all of his teachings, he was talking, establishing believers, telling them the things that are wrong with their lives and how to change it. And he also told them also, the things where we are, our condition with God. He had made us to sit down in heavenly places in Christ, far above, because whether we like it or not, there is a glorious church in the heart of God. So God is, Paul was saying, there's that glorious church in the heart of God. That's where we are seated. That's our position. That's our inheritance. But it was John that told us how to get to that inheritance. Because we have been saying all of this, we have been saying, okay, we are seated, we are seated, we are seated. But who determines what goes on in the UK today? Who determines what goes on in the US today? Who determines what goes on in Nigeria today? He's a Fulani man, he's an awesome man, there's a Fulani headsman all over the place. Who determines what goes on in the media? Is it the church that determines what goes on in the media? Is it the ecclesia that determines? So how do we say we are reigning? He said, I say, we shall reign in this life, in this world. Amen. It's not a spiritual reign that, okay, I'm ready. I know I may not be the governor, I'm ready. You will be the governor. You will be the one that determines what goes on in the schools. You will Amen. be the one that determines sexual orientation. Amen. When we get there. <laughs> Amen. Let, let me give room to Pastor Sophie. Maybe you want Amen. to say something. It's not, it's, it's not in heaven like they used to sing. Oh, yeah. we shall have joy in heaven. <laughs> All those things will pass. I can't wait to go. Yeah. And I, I've heard some people um, saying as well, okay, I will leave this life very soon. All the sorrow, I will leave this life. Mm -hmm. Heaven, heaven will be, my house will be there. Quite a lot of things that nowadays a lot of people are changing. Some people used to say that they've had dreams where they've seen their houses and all that. Uh, it was um, uh, where, where he says, uh, I will go and prepare a place for you in my father's house. There are many mentions, you know, uh, mentions. This is how people used to interpret it, that I saw my house there. I can't wait to go. But now... Um, the eyes of understanding of people are getting open more and more. They are not just okay. making heaven, making heaven more and more. People are understanding that the kingdom of this world needs to become the kingdom of our God. And who is going to do that? Me and you. Yeah. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you very much, Pastor. Yes, if we die, if any believer dies today, he goes to heaven, the people should know that ultimately the earth is where the kingdom of God will be expressed. That was a very fantastic contribution, Pastor. Yeah. So, so the sixth seal was opened, and then let's trust God that very soon we're going to get to the seventh seal. Um, let's read from verse nine. And after these things, Sorry, the electrical company is just messing with us here. We, we um, shall own it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, we, sh we shall absolutely. own it. Yes, we are going to own it and direct it. Hallelujah. You know, um, there's a lot of things going on in Nigeria today. And then uh, uh, believers are split to this side, to that side. You know, there's, there are secessionist groups who want to who want to go their own way, who want to um, start another uh, region for themselves and all that. But, you know, the Lord has been warning me and saying, see, you actually belong to Zion and that we should converse for his government more. Amen. Yeah, I know that we have to take a decision of what is going on in Nigeria today, uh, at least um, while, before the kingdom begins to rule. But the Lord is warning us not to be lost. I've been warning me not to be lost in the um, political fiasco. Yes, in the 
political sphere so that we will still have the mentality of the kingdom of God, so that the kingdom of God will not be lost. Because if we are lost in it, yeah. uh, the kingdom of God will not find expression. Yeah. It will be part of the Yorubas fighting the Fulanis or part of the uh, Fulanis fighting the Yorubas and all that. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, it was seven. Verse nine. After these things, I looked and behold a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, tongues, standing before the throne, on and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes. They are those now. So after the you know after the ministration of the four four um, horsemen, some people came into the fullness. After this sealing, also some people came into the fullness and they got white robes. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, from all nations, tribes, people, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Mm -hmm. All the angels stood round about the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and honor and glory. Uh, Amen. Amen. Blessing Amen. and glory and wisdom. Amen. And, uh, thanksgiving and honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes and where did they come from? And I said to him, to him Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who, who come out of the great tribulation. That great tribulation is that, you know, is the process they went through, going through the gates. You understand? The 12 gates. And, and the 12 gates. That's the process they went through as they went through the 12 gates. You know, that's the great tribulation they were talking about. It's not a particularly great tribulation that is, it's the same great tribulation that those who went through the ministration of the ministry of the four horsemen went through. Is that same ministration that they went through? Is that same tribulation? Amen. Yes, okay. Okay, so maybe we, we end it in uh, chapter seven tonight. And I said to him, sir, you know, he said, these are the, that's in verse 14. These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and wash their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serving day and night. When you say they are before the throne of God and serving day and night, that means like we are now, you, get, you know, they are before the throne, we are before the throne. If we are conscious of the throne, the throne is a consciousness away. Amen. You understand? They are before the throne of God and serving their name. Amen. In his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. So there are some people, did you see now? He who sits on the throne shall do what? Dwell yes. among them. Is that what we see in Revelation chapter 22? When he said the habitation of God is now with men. Amen. Did you get it? Yes. So what we are saying now is that that same situation where God was dwelling in them, among them, Happened to the guys under the fifth in the fifth seal. It's happening to this guy now that have gone through the gates. Mm -hmm. So that means that he's talking about series of coming into perfection. Series. So if we come into perfection without the time when the kingdom is supposed to physically rule the earth, you will experience this. Mm -hmm. You God will not stay eh, because you have not. Um, God will not say because you have not, um, he's not ready now to make the finality of the days are not ready. That you should now be languishing in one hellfire or you should be in one place where they will keep you. No, you will get the all that God has for you. You understand? It's like, um, how do I describe it? Okay, there are guys in the medical school. Okay, okay, let me, okay, when I was in, in school, when I was in school, we were meant to finish uh, at um, form five. We called it form five, and we had five classes in our secondary schools. We had five classes, you know. And um, unlike today, we had they have six classes today. They have they call it uh, junior secondary school three years, senior secondary school three years. So, but in our time, it was just five five years. So uh, when I got to the fourth year. I sat for my final exam that others were, were all supposed to generally sit for in the fifth year. I sat for it and I made all the papers that I sat for. 
Did you get that? Amen. So, okay. So, um, they will not say, oh, it's not time for you to do the paper, so we'll not give you your results. Did you get that? Yeah. And we're all supposed to do the papers when we come to the fifth year. But I sat for my own on the fourth year, and all the papers that I sat for, I passed it. I passed them very, very well. I was in form four, and I stood for them, and I passed them very well. Now, God will not say, the, the, the examination body will now say, how old are you? You're just 15, or you're just 16. You're not, even though you have sat for this exam, will not give you your results. No, you do get it. Yeah. So the, let me give it, let me bring it to what we're talking about now. Let's say this is where God is, the physical kingdom is supposed to be expressed on the earth fully. Mm -hmm. This is the time where God has appointed. Now, if you reach there at this level, if you reach the fullness of Christ, you will experience what people are supposed to generally experience here. You will begin to experience it at this point. Amen. If, am I clear? Amen. Amen. Pastor Sophie, you are my primary. Amen. Um, Amen. Audience. Amen. Am I clear about that? Yes, Pastor. Yes, Pastor. Yes. Okay. Yes, Pastor. So, yeah. God will not say, oh, until you get to in the kingdom will be expressed, you will not enjoy. You know, the only thing is that the glorious body, yes. Amen. You understand? Uh -huh. But everything is yours. Amen. Yes. So it says, so this guy that I have white was said, for the throne of God and serving day and night. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them any more, nor thirst any more, nor any heat. But the midst of the throne. Do you see? When we get the sun, he said the sun will not be there alive. Neither the candlestick. So he said the sun shall not smite the heat. They are getting their reward. Amen. They are getting the same that we generally get in Revelation 22. Amen. Okay. They shall not have anymore. The sun shall not strike them. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne um, and lead them living fountains of waters to wipe away every tear from their faces. Fountains of waters are the ones we see. In the, book, the water, there's a river that flows in. Uh, trees of life on this side and on that side of the river. You understand? So yeah. it's uh, so that's the sixth seal. When be the next time we we'll talk about the seventh seal? Amen. Amen. Therefore, are there the there before the throne of God and serve him yes. in his temple. And he that sits on the throne shall dwell among them. So currently we are um, before the throne of God, serving him day and night as long as we fulfill his commandments. Yeah. As long as we are filled with the knowledge of his will, yeah. in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, and then put yeah. that in manifest yeah. it, then it's like us um, being before the throne of God and serving him day and night. As we have gone through the gates, going through the gates, we will experience... The 12 gates. Yes, yes. Amen. Until the entire kingdom of God comes. I'll we'll be living under a new heaven, new earth. Amen. You know, you be, you may be you have your neighbors maybe you have your house rent or you have your own house you're going to this going to your work in a company but Man. you have an open you you step upon a new earth amen who befalls you you are not all bit of this world whatever they say don't on you diseases don't stick on you. don't stick on you all Amen. of those things that the endless people of the earth Amen. does not affect you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So do you do you believe then that some of us 
currently um, before the throne of God that we've gone through the 12 gates, serving him day and night. Do you, I know that one day when you were teaching, you were, you were saying that it is not because you've not gotten there that you think that some other people have not gotten there, that there are some yeah. people currently who are there, who have gone through the 12 gates. And I believe so. They are serving God day and night. Amen. But those people are, so. they are somewhere. Only God will so. know who they are because yeah. we will not have eyes to, to be able to identify them, will we? Because it's not yes, going it... to be through signs and wonders. <laughs> I was explaining to Pastor that with what I have seen in my life, mm. with the little time I have seen in ministry, Signs and wonders does not mean anything <laughs> because I have seen some people performing signs and wonders. I rather not express it. So I know from a real experience that I have seen myself that signs and wonders does not mean anything. It is true, God, there are true people that God will use for signs and wonders, but there are some people who use some other things to, to do signs and wonders because That's the things they do, even if they say the gift of God are without, without repentance, it is not. It can be of God. <laughs> you are amazed at it. Yeah. It, it, it can be of God. Yeah. So, um, so, so how can we identify them? It is not true signs and wonders. How can we identify those people? Well, I well, fruits you know them, but they are and, and um, but they are fruits. Yeah, you will. Be, I don't know whether I have an answer to how we can. I, man of God, that I see. Man is. Uh, He's very close to all the gates. He's very close. He's a Amen. He doesn't have a title. Amen. Yeah. He's uh, an engineer by profession. He lives his life. Amen. He loves, he loves people. Amen. The son of God. Amen. The son of God indeed. So. I recently, I also discovered that okay, yeah, even him, you understand, but he's close, at least he's closer than I am. Amen. And all that. Amen. That can make us feel, have the feeling uh, of is sometimes when we, I think this is my own time is a little faster. My time is saying, oh, my time is saying five minutes to, I'm sure it's maybe 10 minutes to. Nine minutes. Oh, no. It's eight minutes now. But, but no, what, what, no. I, what, I, what I want to say regarding that, Pastor, is that we will be very surprised that it yeah. won't be people with the title. It won't be people yeah. who are in front shouting with the microphone. Yeah. It won't be people that yeah, you're are very, right, very shocked. The people that God right. has written, yes, we will be very, 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 very surprised. Yes. We, that we that for sure it. I know. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're fasting. Maybe you're you are not eating God. It gives you that feeling for the truth. You are more conscious about God. Mm -hmm. You can imagine somebody living like that for five years. You are eating, but that kind of kind of a raptured feeling when you are on a three day fast or seven day fast in God's hands, you understand Amen. you have that kind. That is what I can compare it with. Amen. The closest that I've been dwelling before the truth. Amen. You know, if we can bring that, what we got in the moment of separation, 
mm-hmm. for our daily lives. Yeah? That even though we are not in one room praying, we are, and we are still experiencing kingdom effects to Amen. bear on our day. God, you know, you know, in that, God, nobody is abusing you. Nobody is in, nobody is depriving you. So you don't have opportunity of things, you understand, or talking in certain. But if you can bring that atmosphere to your daily life, to our, our daily lives, Amen. it can compare to what it, for the truth. To what it is in Revelation 7, verse 15. Yeah. Therefore, are uh, there before the throne of God, and serve him yeah. day and night in his temple, and, and he that sits on the throne shall dwell among them. So I yes. pray that all of us, after going through the 12 gates, get there here on earth. Amen. 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 Being before his throne, the consciousness Amen. of being before his throne, Amen. and serving him day and night. E katarabaso kotono mari katarabaso. The Lord will give us grace. Amen. With the different teachings that we receive, um, bless you, Pastor. I've been um, reading Ezekiel and uh, and Revelation, and I really saw that it was it was exactly you know almost the same. Um, but like you were saying, I was wondering why. Um, Ezekiel didn't eat the the word of God for it to become bitter, but you were explaining what Ezekiel was um, seeing was more external. And so when I was comparing it, it it was just beautiful. I was just um, even like the the rainbow angel. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. not an angel in Ezekiel, but he talked about uh, the rainbow as well. And uh, It gives more understanding, but you can see there's like a difference because Ezekiel saw the vision directly and and, um, John was, uh, it was an angel who pulled him to see the vision. Yeah. And that was in the Old Testament where Ezekiel, it looks as if in the Old Testament, some of their things were quite abrupt. It was like, it's like it happens like whoosh. yeah 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 like yeah, yeah. yeah. because yeah. it was an externality in the new testament it was fellowship yeah okay it's yeah. like fire poof, fire will come <laughs> yes yes in the, in the old testament but in the new testament it was fellowship so Fel- you see the angel of the lord taking him and say ah john taking see him. this see, see this okay Okay, I see, I see. Amen. So um, I thank God for that. So that was just um, wonderful to see. And one thing noted is captivity. That all the people who have been in captivity, they are the people seeing the greatest visions. (laughs) So nobody has an excuse Mm. not to fellowship with God. Yeah. You know, they, they've, they've, where they've put you, where they've locked you, where your father's house, your mother's house, whatever it is, the people in captivity have seen the greatest vision. Hallelujah. Daniel, Ezekiel, John, they mm. were in captivity. They were not having their feet up at mm. the beach, having a nice time, mm. where they will say that when I, when I'm, you know, when I go to the beach, that's where I can. I can receive some fresh air and hear from Mm. God. They were in captivity. So none Mm -hmm. of us have an excuse. When I was was going through the the different books, I told myself, I said, but we don't have any excuses. We don't have any excuse. None of us. Mm. None of us and uh, people, you know, some other people, different I mean, I can apply to, uh, some people might not be happy with what I'm saying, but I can apply to different races in different continents. We mm-hmm. don't have any excuse. Mm-hmm. Whether you feel that you are in captivity with the way things are put by the government and all that, God is still with you as long mm-hmm. as you fellowship with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it because I am this or is it because I'm that? God is saying the greatest 
visions that I gave to the people were people in captivity. Hallelujah. If you are in a land where you believe that you're in captivity, where you believe that you are not treated fairly, God has released his grace mm. for you. The people that I'm talking about, they know themselves. I don't want yeah. to be, I don't want somebody to come and wait for me in the corner somewhere. Amen. <laughs> but uh, those that have ears will understand in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Pastor Dele Thank Matthew. You Thank you very much. Pastor. From Nigeria, Abuja. That was just a, a wonderful time. Um, opening the eyes of our understanding once again in the book of Revelation 7. I'm going home with uh, verse 15, honestly. Therefore, are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he that sits on the throne shall dwell among them. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Pastor. God bless. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you very much, Pastor Sophie, Pastor Israel. So that it's, a, it's a privilege to be called different platforms and your platform especially to minister to God's people. You are doing a very good work. The Lord will enlighten you more and grant you greater strength and grace Amen. to increase the word and the reach to God's people. Thank Amen. you very much. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Have a lovely night. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Thank you.